heifer. One, two, three, four. Four heifers, one bull, and one cabin. Well, how's everybody doing today? Today's Saturday. It's uh, uh, about 8.30 in the morning right now. We're just feeding the cows. My close-ups on right now. But uh, this morning we had a little bit of frost, which makes the fourth time so far uh, this fall, which, uh, uh, you know, it's a little bit early, especially if I've already had four of them. This morning wasn't too bad, it was just a little bit, but still. Um, the, uh, the next week we're supposed to have a few mornings of upper, upper 20s, which would be like late December, early January weather for us, so a good month, month and a half early on the cold weather. Uh, so right now we got all the hay done, thanks to Wes, and uh, I had my mom raking for him, and uh, we just you know, didn't have the manpower to get out there with everybody and get it done, but uh, it all wasn't very good stuff. It only did like a bell or two an acre. Um, it was another 150 bells that we got, so we're about 150 bells dry. Or, we're about 150 bales short of dry hay, which we should be fine because we got plenty of baleage. Um, today I have like a ton and a half left of seed to put out, and then we'll be done putting out seed. Uh, started off with uh, started off with 26 tons, and I got a ton and a half left. I know I covered 416 acres with the Mayton rye, and uh, I forgot to look last night how much. Uh, how many acres I've covered with a triticale so far, but uh, hopefully if everybody shows up to work today, uh, sounds like it's going to be a little bit of a busy day with the, the five babies and one more cabin right now, but if everything goes smooth, we should be able to knock that out today, no problem, but uh, we'll get after it and uh, hopefully get it done, so we'll see how it goes. Alright, so real quick, I'm going to explain this. Uh, this field is number 30, and it was drilled on October 25th. It was the last milk cow field that was drilled, um, or you know, the last field drilled on the grazing block, or whatever you want to call it, the platform. And so this was drilled October 25th, and it's the shortest that we got right now that is designated just for the milk cows. Right over here is number 29, and it was the first drilled on October 13th. So you can see the big time difference in between the two. Um, you can see here underneath the fence that the Bermuda grass has gone dormant from the freezes that we've gotten. And so the only thing growing now is the cereal rye. Um, so from October 13th to October 25th, there was 300 acres that were planted just for the milk cows. And then so since the 25th, I've been planting uh, planted some heifer ground and been doing uh, hay fields for silage. So I had to get it back up here real quick. I had some stuff to do and uh, I've already mixed up dry cow feed and I'm about to drive to the back of the feed lane to get ready to put that out. But what I wanted to show in those two fields, um, they, they just happened to be first and last. Number 30 needed some rock around the water trough and between uh, the rain and, and trying to get other seeds in the ground, it, it took a little while to get it. Uh, and we got it done right before I finished all the other fields for the milk cows, and so it just happened to be last. But showing the, the differences in those two fields, that's the way it is all the way across. Uh, the whole however many freaking fields there are, um, that's the way it is. Everything's at a different level, a different stage, and what what that does is create a feed wedge. And if you're a grazer, you understand that, um, uh, now he's looking at me weird because I was waving my hand. Anyway, <laughs> so if you're a grazer, you know what I'm talking about when I say a feed wedge. And what, that, what a feed wedge is, if you don't know, is the level of all your grass. You want a feed wedge. You want your shortest grass here and then everything, all the other fields to climb up to the height of the level that you want to graze uh, or what you want your cows to go into uh, grazing or once ready to graze, whatever. So um, taking that almost two weeks to cover 300 acres, which it, I mean, yeah, you could go out there and drill it in three days if all you got to do is drill, but between feeding and all of the other stuff and 
uh, taking care of the cows and fixing stuff that's broke and and all that. There's just not enough time in the day to, to drill that many acres that quick. So uh, it took two weeks, which is about normal. What that has created is it has already started a feed wedge, which is awesome. Because there's nothing worse than having it all ready at the same time. Because there's nothing you can really do about it until it's about ready to go. You can start a little early, but by the time you go through all the fields, you uh, you start getting some really long stuff towards the end of the first round. And that has happened before from uh, kind of a weather-induced, what it did was it we planted and we got enough rain, it got everything started, and then we had about 30 to 40 days of dry weather and that like stunted or stopped growth and then so once it started raining again everything grew out off everything took off at the same time and it made the whole place ready at the same time uh, to graze and that that's very difficult to deal with uh, it's you know trying to feed the TMR to go off the grass and the grass is getting out away from you but you have to keep going through it because uh, December January the growth rate is so slow because of the cooler weather and the less sunshine um, or the lack of sunshine, it it really slows that the growth rate down. So you can't speed up and go faster because then you end up running into where you don't have any grass because you've grazed it all. So you have to keep that wedge. And we're looking for like a 38 day round to begin with. Um, and then in late February, early March, we'll speed up because uh, the temperature starts to warm up and uh, you know, this starting to get more days of sunshine or more time of sunshine, and so the growth rate starts to uh, go grow faster, and we'll uh, speed up to 24 hours a day, which will be like a 20 or an 18 day round. So actually, having those two fields the way they are right now, it, it, it's actually ideal to to be able to start grazing and continue having the cows go into the highest quality of grass. Hopefully it all works out. So far the weather's been really good. Uh, you know, the frost, having those frosts a little early, I mean, wasn't a bad thing. And so now the ryegrass has no competition and it can just grow. Uh, here pretty quick, we'll get some fertilizer put on it. And I, I would I would say early December we should be grazing. All right, so cut all the boring crap out of putting seeds on the truck and bringing them over here, but Wes is leaving my truck right now. Uh, we just topped off the drill with about 20 bags. Um, he's going to go back and get the last uh, 35 bags, and that'll be it for the year. Uh, we're going to be headed to the hay field on the other side of town. It took us a couple days to finish this field, and we finally finished it last night, right after dark. So we just had to fold it up and leave it here. This thing's so wide, it's 15 foot wide or so, so uh, it's not very fun driving down the road. And I sure as hell don't want to drive down the road in the dark. But right now we're headed down. We got to probably say about a 20 minute drive to the hay field on the other side of town. And then we'll get there and we'll start drilling. Well, all right, we've already been out here going for a little while. We've already done all this on the side of the hill here. And then we just put uh, the last bit of the seed in the drill. So that'll be it. Wes came out with another 35 bags and we loaded it up. Right now the drill is completely full and then so once that's gone that's it. We do have both bush hogs out here. Uh, this is rented land so we're just cleaning it up for the guy and also cleaning it up for the what we're planting. Uh, Wes is taking off in the old truck with a load of hay and then the newer trucks over there with a load of hay. So uh, I'll end up driving either the truck back or my pickup back. Uh, Wes is going to take that back and my mom is going to pick him up and bring him back out here to either get the truck or get my truck so we'll uh, keep after it and see how much we can get done. I'm, I'm hoping to get the rest of this hill done. Probably another 20 acres or so. Or maybe not that much. 15 acres? Something like that. So we'll get after it. Well I just looked at the acre meter and uh, so far out here we've done 44 acres and that other field we did 55 acres of this triticale and I was shooting for 100. I can't believe how close that is. Uh, it's probably just dumb luck. Let's see. Well, two outside ones are already kind of running empty. Still got quite a bit here. 
starting to see the bottom. This other side is pretty close, about the same. You can start to see there. Anyway, figuring that's probably going to be another four acres of seed or so. Four, four, four to five. So to come out just about right, because uh, they, they did have a little bit of cereal in them when I filled it up with triticale the first time, or when, when me and Wes did. Um, never planted triticale before. This is just something we're going to try out to try to diversify our forage. Um, you know, we've been doing the Bermuda grass and the volunteer ryegrass and a little bit of ryegrass. It's been working, but it it just seems like uh, when it's when you really need it, it's hard to get the spring, the right kind of spring, that to uh, capture all the ryegrass like we had this year, last year. There was plenty of grass, but it was too wet to get to it, and so we, you know, we ended up. Uh, with about half of it really really good and half of it really 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 crappy uh, baleage and so um, Bermuda grass was behind because of the late spring you know first cutting being late and then uh, then we didn't get the rain after the second cutting so we need to try to diversify and do something a little different and that's what the deal is here is we're gonna test this uh, triticale out um, I, uh, I got two different stories of seed rate. One guy said 70, one guy said 100 pounds an acre. Uh, so we went with 80 and that's about where we're going to end up. We also planted, oh, let's see, we did the 40 acre hay field in Mayton at about 90 pounds, 95 pounds an acre. And we did about 10 acres on that same field that where we started planting the triticale, um, with 90, 95 pounds of Mayton. And then all the whole grazing is Mayton rye, which the Mayton rye at the dairy is going to be nothing but for grazing. And it, uh, so that'll give us about 150 acres of uh, cereal rye and triticale to chop for silage or to do baleage. Um, I'm hoping this stuff's so damn thick and so damn tall that we won't be able to do it and we can call somebody in to come in and chop it. That'll be awesome. And then uh, hopefully, kind of wish I had enough seed to go do this whole field. So I'm going to be probably like 80 acres short. And hopefully it, it'll grow the volunteer that it normally does. And we'll be able to get that. I mean, last year, um, you know, we were cutting and bailing some that was 16, 18% protein. So hopefully with this triticale and that Mayton rye, we can get some really good stuff. Um, and uh, maybe next year plant a lot more of it. So we'll just see how it goes. Won't know. <laughs> We'll know how it goes until you know uh, late March, early April, depending on what kind of spring we get. But it's kind of getting chilly out here. I know I got a uh, half a mile walk that way to get the truck. It's gonna feel like a half a mile, and um, it's getting kind of cold. And so I'm gonna head back to the dairy. Got to throw away all these bags, make sure everything's going okay. I, I know we ended up with four more heifer calves born this afternoon uh, that the guys picked up. So go check all that out, see how everything's going, make sure everything's going good. Yeah, so tomorrow we'll get out here and uh, I'll bring a couple scoops, scoopers and some brooms and, and maybe get somebody to help me and get this drill completely swept out. And uh, that way we can take it back to the dairy completely empty and then we'll get it cleaned up and put away until uh, maybe spring. Maybe we'll be planting some sorghum. We'll see how that goes. Uh, with that, we wanna, I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. If you like the video, give a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, give a thumbs down. And we'll uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.